Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington and today we are going to be talking about purple loosestrife. Purple loosestrife is a showy plant that's considered to be invasive here in North America. It's so invasive apparently that it's said to be one of the 100 worst invasive alien species in the world by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Here in the US, the plant is present in nearly every single state and it's listed as a noxious weed in most of them. Now there is little debate among ecologists that purple loosestrife can be aggressive in North America. If you glance through the scientific literature, you will encounter numerous studies highlighting the aggressiveness of purple loosestrife and the problems that this aggressiveness poses. Purple loosestrife is said to disrupt the balance of wetland ecosystems and threaten the diversity of flora and fauna. Media outlets often highlight these problems, using strong language and loaded words to get their message across that purple loosestrife is unwanted here in North America. But if you dig a little deeper, you will encounter some pretty surprising viewpoints, observations, hypotheses, studies, revelations, and data suggesting that purple loosestrife is actually not always detrimental to North American wetland ecosystems. And in some cases, Purple loosestrife is associated with increases in species richness and diversity. In other words, purple loosestrife may not be as bad as we've been led to believe it is. Why am I filming a video on this particular topic? Well, I'm filming a video on this topic because there's a story that's being told in North America. Most people only hear one side of this story, while few people hear the other side of the story. One side of the story involves the threat that purple loosestrife poses to wetland ecosystems, while the other side, which is equally as important as the first side, is that purple loosestrife is not always detrimental and that the anti-purple loosestrife programs and propaganda may not be well supported overall by the available evidence and studies on the actual impact of this plant on North American wetland ecosystems. So to be clear, this other side isn't based on my feelings, it's based on research. Is purple loosestrife responsible for destroying wetlands? Is purple loosestrife responsible for creating biological deserts? Let's find out. And to get started, let's answer the following two questions first. What exactly is purple loosestrife and how did it get here? Well, purple loosestrife, Lithrum salicaria, is a plant that inhabits swamps, marshes, riverbanks, and lake margins. It typically grows to heights of between two to six feet tall, and its most conspicuous feature is its flower, which blossoms midsummer through early autumn. Flowers are purple or magenta, sometimes pink, and they contain between five to seven petals. Stems are four or six angled. Leaves are narrow and lance-shaped. As I mentioned earlier, purple loosestrife is a somewhat recent newcomer to North America, but it's not that new. The plant is native to parts of Europe and Asia. It was introduced to North America most likely unintentionally and intentionally in the early 1800s. Unintentionally, the seeds of purple loosestrife probably hitched a ride in ship ballast. It's also likely that seeds made their way into wool and sheep that were imported from Europe. Intentionally, purple loosestrife was likely introduced for medicinal and horticultural purposes. And today, the plant is found in nearly every single state within the U.S. as well as in several provinces within Canada. A few moments ago, I mentioned that there is little debate among ecologists that purple loosestrife can be aggressive in North America. It grows prolifically, it produces lots of seeds, and it spreads fairly easily without the direct assistance from humans. What is debated, however, is the extent to which purple loosestrife is problematic. How bad is it? Well, many researchers and ecologists report that purple loosestrife is a real problem in North America. These words, published by the Ontario Invasive Plant Council, pretty much sum up the official narrative that's commonly promoted in North America. Dense stands of purple loosestrife outcompete native plants for habitat. This results in changes to ecosystem functions such as reductions in nesting sites, shelter and food for birds, fish and wildlife, as well as an overall decline in biodiversity. Other researchers, however, offer a different viewpoint and their research suggests that purple loosestrife actually may not be that problematic in every single case. So let's take a look at the claim that purple loosestrife outcompetes native plants for habitat and that invasion leads to an overall decline in biodiversity. 
This may be true in some instances, but it's certainly not true in every instance. This study, for example, analyzed the association between the abundance of purple loosestrife and plant species richness in Ontario, Canada. The researchers discovered no significant differences in mean species richness between plots with and without purple loosestrife. They go on to say that native plants like variegated pond lily and several bulrush species were more likely to be found in plots with purple loosestrife than without. The researchers concluded that there is no support for the hypothesis that the number of species in wetlands is decreasing in association with the invasion of Lithrum salicaria in Ontario, Canada. Of course, that's just one study in one location. What about other locations? Well, let's look at another study that analyzed purple loosestrife populations in Connecticut. The researchers in this study reported that while purple loosestrife biomass was associated with lower biomass of other species, there was little correlation between the density or cover of Lithrum salicaria stems and any changes in density, richness, or diversity of other plant stems. Frequently, the presence of Lithrum salicaria was loosely associated with increasing numbers of other species. And yet another study, this one conducted in southeastern Minnesota, reported that Contrary to expectations, increased species richness and diversity were associated with Lithrum salicaria densities and were significantly greater in invaded than in uninvaded wetland patches. This is contrary to predictions that Lithrum salicaria should outcompete all other plants and create monocultures. So purple loosestrife invasion, interestingly, isn't always associated with reductions in biodiversity. But what about the claim that purple loosestrife invasion negatively impacts birds? Well, researchers studied this association in Massachusetts, but even before the researchers discussed their results, they provided a critical piece of information that could easily be overlooked by readers, but it's something that's very revealing and pertinent to our discussion. They say that historically, agricultural conversion and road and building construction have contributed to the loss of 58 to 64 percent of the original wetland habitat of Massachusetts. In other words, invasive plants haven't caused the majority of changes to wetland ecosystem functions in Massachusetts. Industry and agriculture have. Yet purple loosestrife receives a significant chunk of the blame for something that it may only be responding to rather than ultimately causing. So researchers in the study analyzed the effects of purple loosestrife on wetland bird abundances. They reported that some wetland bird species were negatively impacted by increasing purple loosestrife cover, but purple loosestrife did not categorically decrease habitat quality for all wetland bird species, and it may have had a positive influence on quality for some species. Another paper on this particular topic reported that several species of waterfowl and songbirds have been observed nesting in loosestrife stands, including American coots, pie-billed grebes, black-crowned night herons, American goldfinches, and gray catbirds. Additionally, red-winged blackbirds preferentially nest in loosestrife over cattail, while marsh wrens prefer cattails. The author of this paper concluded by acknowledging that purple loosestrife may indeed dramatically alter the appearance and structure of a wetland, but that it is disturbing to find the lack of quantitative data masked by the use of biased language such as referring to loosestrife as an aggressive alien invader. Regarding the impact of purple loosestrife on animals in general, this paper mentions that some animals have been shown to be negatively impacted, specifically American toad tadpoles and marsh wrens. But marsh wrens, ironically, nest in and benefit from the presence of a Phragmites species known as common reed, which is another highly invasive marsh plant in eastern North America. This same paper also mentions that some animals have been undisturbed or have been positively affected by purple loosestrife invasions. So by now, you could probably see that here in North America, purple loosestrife isn't always associated with reductions in nesting sites and shelter for birds. Purple loosestrife doesn't always outcompete native plants for habitat. And purple loosestrife isn't always associated with overall declines in biodiversity. You can also probably see that the issue surrounding purple loosestrife is complex. There are certainly scientific studies documenting its spread throughout North America and its association with significant changes to wetland ecosystems. 
but there are also scientific studies documenting little to no significant changes within wetland ecosystems, as well as positive effects associated with the presence of purple loosestrife in some locations. To say that purple loosestrife is problematic in every instance is not true. And to say that purple loosestrife is completely innocuous is not true either. What is true is that this is a complex and nuanced issue that requires some thinking, it requires some digging, some acceptance, and some letting go of previously held beliefs. And this is what being an adult is all about. Not jumping to conclusions, not being triggered, not taking media headlines at face value, but being willing to look into all sides of a story and ultimately being willing to have our minds changed. To end this video, I will conclude by sharing this statement, which provides a good summary of what we discussed. Purple loosestrife is certainly an invader, and some native species likely suffer from an invasion. But stating that this plant has large negative impacts on wetlands is probably exaggerated. The most commonly mentioned impact, purple loosestrife crowds out native plants and forms a monoculture, is controversial and has not been observed in nature, with maybe one exception. There is certainly no evidence that purple loosestrife kills wetlands or creates biological deserts as it is repeatedly reported. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. I also encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. And I also encourage you to follow me on social media. You can give Learn Your Land a follow on Instagram and on Facebook. Thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.